Going away on vacation and thinking about bringing your paddleboard? I'm Mary Beth, paddle adventurer, and I've traveled with my paddleboard a number of times. I've also opted to rent locally at my destination. In this video, I'll talk about packing essentials, tips, and things to consider before you take off on your next travel adventure with your paddleboard. The first thing to think about is what type of vacation you're going on and the likelihood that you'll be paddling at your destination. Before packing your paddleboard, ask yourself these questions. Realistically, how often will I be able to paddle? Do I have access to waterways? Do I have proper transportation and a place to store the paddleboard? Will I be moving around a lot or staying in the same place? Depending on your answers, it might make more sense for you to rent locally, either from a budget perspective, other activities you wanna participate in, the amount of times you're moving around from place to place, or the number of times you'll realistically be able to paddle. Another thing to consider before you decide, do you have the knowledge, tools, and resources to paddle locally at your destination? If not, do some research and find a local paddle or surf shop to get information on best spots, weather, safety, environmental awareness, and probably a lot more. Or consider booking a tour with a local operator. All right, you've decided to pack your paddleboard. Here are your next steps. Check and confirm that airline requirements are met. More to come on that. Clean and dry your board. Add a bag tag to your paddleboarding bag. Make a checklist so you don't forget anything. If you subscribe to my blog, paddleadventurer.com, I send you a free paddleboarding packing checklist. Let's talk about traveling specifically with an inflatable paddleboard, also known as an iSUP. The dimensions of an iSUP bag are similar to a large suitcase, giving you the ability to check your paddleboarding bag at no additional oversized costs. Most airlines charge for check bags, but I've never been charged with oversized bag fees when traveling with my inflatable paddleboard. It's always a good idea to measure your paddleboarding bag and check the airline requirements and bag fees. Here are some packing tips when it comes to bringing your inflatable paddleboard. Roll your board around your pump in order to protect the pump and maximize on bag space. I've packed and traveled with a manual and electrical pump this way. If you decide to pack your electrical pump, check the battery type, watt hours, and the airline's restrictions on checking batteries. If your pump needs an additional power source to run, ensure that you have that at your destination. Try to roll or fold your paddleboard to ensure the fin box is flat and not on a curved edge. Check out my video on how to roll or fold your paddleboard. Next, strap your paddleboard to create a tight roll and ensure it stays in place. Depending on the design of your inflatable paddleboard bag, either put your three-piece paddle in first or put your board in the bag first followed by your paddle. Pack whichever way is easiest and the most protection for your paddle. Once your board and paddle are in the bag, pack additional items like your PFD, leash, dry sack, and repair kit. You'll find that there's lots of little spots to add in these items once the board is in the bag, such as the top and bottom of the roll and areas the bag is not touching the board. To save on additional check bag fees, check your iSUP with a few additional items in your iSUP bag and bring all your clothes in a carry-on. Having wheels on your inflatable paddleboarding bag and the ability to hide away any backpack type straps is super helpful. Now, let's talk about traveling with a hard paddleboard. Traveling with a hardboard is doable, but can be trickier and more expensive than traveling with an inflatable paddleboard. Most airlines will consider this a surfboard and it'll be categorized as a piece of sporting equipment. Check with the airlines on total length limit. Some airlines will require the board to be under nine feet, six inches, which rules out a lot of paddleboards. Since airlines categorize a hard stand-up paddleboard as a piece of equipment, there are likely to be additional fees outside a normal check bag. The fees will vary airline to airline and will also depend on your destination. You'll need a protective carrying bag for your board and your paddle. 
Consider transportation upon your arrival at your destination. What type of vehicle is it? Is it big enough to transport your board? Or does it have the proper equipment to transport your board, including things like straps to tie it down? And consider the storage and safekeeping of your hard paddleboard at your destination. Let's get into some packing tips. Proper gear for weather and water temperatures. It can be challenging to remember what to wear for summertime weather when you're in the cold dead of winter or vice versa. To jog your memory, look back on photos when it was similar weather conditions. Don't forget the accessories you typically use paddling while in similar conditions to that of your destination. Depending on space, it's best to try and keep as many items together as possible. If you're bringing a dry sack, put a few items in the dry sack. Place a few articles of soft clothing, such as a UV rash guard, around your paddle to help protect it. Use a mesh bag to hold your fins. This is especially useful if you have a finger screw and plate. That way it ensures that the small pieces don't get lost or misplaced during transit. Pack a repair kit and spare parts. Patches, glue, a valve wrench for inflatable paddle boards, extra washers for inflatable paddle board pumps, extra fins, a screw and plate for those fins, anything that you can think of that would be difficult to replace when traveling, and items that would be essential to getting you back on the water if something were to happen. Use a Transportation Security Administration, TSA, approved lock. This will help keep the zipper closed on your paddleboard bag for the duration of the trip, avoid security cutting through a zip tie or a lock that isn't TSA approved, and help prevent easy theft. Use a hanging luggage scale to weigh your paddleboarding bag to ensure you're not over the airline limit. There'll be lots of room in your paddleboarding bag to add additional items, not just paddling gear, so be careful not to overpack and exceed the weight limit. Depending on your paddling location and the type of paddling you plan to do, bring an inflatable PFD to save on space. Most airlines and countries allow you to bring an inflatable PFD with CO2 cartridges. CO2 cartridges found in inflatable PFDs are not harmful and are needed for this piece of safety equipment to operate. Always check with your airline and any connecting airlines as they have final say. Keep your PFD easily accessible for inspection and come prepared with the printed supporting documents. It's important to check and inspect your inflatable PFD at your destination and again upon arrival home in case there was any damage or it was tampered with. Check out my video on how to rearm and care for your inflatable PFD. If you don't have an inflatable waist belt PFD or need to or prefer to bring a vest PFD, pack it around your rolled inflatable paddleboard or flat against your hardboard. This will also provide added protection to your board and equipment. If you're bringing a waterproof action camera to capture your memories and adventures, remember to keep it, its lithium batteries and any other valuables with you. Don't pack it in your check bag with your other paddling gear. Here are a few things to consider when traveling with your paddleboard. Give yourself more time at the airport. Even when traveling with an inflatable paddleboard, I've had to go to the oversized bag area, no extra charges, for inspection of my bag and my CO2 cartridges. Always double check the airline's requirements and limitations before leaving home. Notify the airline that you'll be traveling with a paddleboard. This is not applicable to inflatable paddleboards, but if you're traveling with a hardboard, I highly recommend you call the airline ahead of time. Keep in mind, airlines are not responsible for theft, lost or damaged equipment, so consider getting additional insurance for your paddleboard. If you don't see your paddleboard at the regular baggage claim, check the oversized baggage claim area, not just for hardboards, but often inflatable paddleboards are sent there too. Your paddleboard bag will get banged up. If you have an inflatable paddleboard and you want to avoid this happening, find another bag or suitcase that will fit your paddleboard but still be within the airline size requirements. If your paddleboard bag has straps that can't be hidden or removed, consider taping them so they're secure. Make sure you have all the safety essentials according to the rules and regulations of the country that you're visiting. It's also important to be aware of the local ecosystem 
and know the rules and regulations to help prevent cross-contamination and the spread of invasive species. This is also why it's important to wash, clean, and dry your board before packing it up. Don't put anything on outside pouches on your paddleboard bag unless the zipper can be securely locked and closed. The board bag could get bumped and the zipper could open. Overall, if your vacation is conducive to paddling, I fully recommend you bring your paddleboard, especially an inflatable one. They're easy to travel with at a low cost. Having your paddleboard with you gives you the flexibility and freedom to paddle when and where you want. Have you traveled with your paddleboard before? or are thinking of taking it on an upcoming trip? Comment below with any additional tips or questions you have. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. Until next time, safe travels and happy adventuring.